Well, first of all, I'd like to thank DevX um, for giving us the stage and the opportunity to discuss uh, Karna's mission and the important issue of uh, chronic kidney disease. Um, and thank you, David, for joining me on the stage. Uh, David and I met. Um, we were both being interviewed for a documentary on the awareness of kidney disease around the world. Uh, and then I was also fortunate to be his guest on Sirius Radio, where he did a, a national show around uh, kidney disease for World Kidney Day. Um, so I'll start with um, what is Karna and what we're all about. Uh, so Karna is a digital health platform that integrates point-of-care testing. These are small devices that measure important biomarkers from blood and urine. Um, and the mission is chronic diseases, but our first mission is chronic kidney disease and why. Uh, so many of you are aware, because maybe you've been to some of the sessions earlier today, but, and if there's one thing you come out of today to remember is chronic kidney disease is probably a billion people in the world, and over 90% of them are unaware. So, which is, um, even though I'm a physician, I worked at Harvard for 18 years, it wasn't until about five years ago I was aware of those numbers, and I realized there was an opportunity uh, to do something about it. So what is our platform? Well, it starts with patient awareness and education, a patient app. And um, so they understand the disease, they understand their levels of abnormality, they understand what to do next. There's a physician portal that supports the doctors. Um, many doctors are ill-equipped and they're overburdened to take care of things that are asymptomatic, right? So patients crash into the end stage of dialysis which is unfortunate and sometimes unavailable or unaffordable and leads to death. Uh, and then there is a module for an administrator or minister of health, which are great supporters of our work, to be able to allocate resources uh, to manage the disease. Um, so uh, maybe we'll spend now a few minutes, uh, David, if you want to tell about, about chronic kidney disease and how we diagnose it. Great. Thanks a lot, Salvatore. So, I'm a clinician. I'm the clinical chief of nephrology at NYU, just a, a few blocks uh, east of here. And I have been thinking about climate in particular and kidney stones. I'm a kidney stone patient myself, not just the president of the club. Um, and the result is that climate is an important contributor to chronic kidney disease. And kidney stones, acute kidney injury, and progression of chronic kidney disease. And I was really pleased to meet Salvatore and Karna Health and learn about their ability to screen for chronic kidney disease. And the two things Salvatore said, blood and urine, and the two things that that basically means are really inexpensive tests. One, the blood test is the serum creatinine. Creatinine is a waste product of muscle, and I hope that everyone in the room knows what their serum creatinine is. I know what mine is, and I want all my patients to know what that is. That's a, the overall best test for kidney disease. It's not perfect, it's, it's got a lot of flaws, and someday it's gonna be replaced, but it's not, it doesn't lead to a measurement of kidney disease, it leads to an estimate of glomerular filtration rate, GFR. So the eGFR is one thing that Salvatore's point of care device can come up with, serum creatinine. The other test that Salvatore mentioned is a urine test, and that is for albumin. Albumin is an important protein in the blood. It belongs in the blood, not in the urine. And if it's in the urine, that is a marker of chronic kidney disease. So when the National Kidney Foundation or the KDGO groups, the international groups involved in uh, assessing kidney disease talk about how to stage kidney disease, there are two parts. There's the G phase or stage, G1 through 5 is the glomerular filtration rate. One, pretty much normal, and five, advanced chronic kidney disease on the verge of needing renal replacement uh, therapy, either dialysis or kidney transplantation. And there's the A stages, A for albumin in the urine, albuminuria, A1, 2, and 3, a little protein, a moderate amount, or more. And why is all of this important? Because, you know, although someone said this morning that chronic kidney disease treatment is expensive, that's true for dialysis and transplantation, but the treatment of earlier stages of chronic kidney disease is relatively inexpensive. And you really want to know that you have chronic kidney disease because most of the people with chronic kidney disease are not gonna go on dialysis. They're not gonna go on for transplants. Obviously, there's not a billion people, uh, as Salvatore said, there's a billion people with chronic kidney disease. There's not a billion people in the world on dialysis. Those people are at increased risk, gigantically increased risk of cardiovascular disease. 
people are much more likely to die of heart attacks and strokes and have amputations of limbs than they are to wind up with progressive chronic kidney disease leading to dialysis and transplantation. So we're talking here not just about preventing kidney disease, we're talking about preventing the most common causes of death in the world, cardiovascular disease. Sure. Uh, maybe we'll spend a minute talking about the work we've already accomplished. So about three years ago, we started our first program in Bermuda, a national program. Uh, we screened a population at risk, 51% had CKD, 94% were unaware. Um, more importantly, 17% had disease that was treatable and 90, almost 90% were unaware. So we were able to identify those people and track them. We found out many of them were not going to see the nephrologist because the copay was too high or the GPs were not referring. So the platform was able to raise alerts to the patient, to the doctors. We were able to eliminate the copay so patients didn't have to pay to get that nephrology expertise. We then went to Cameroon, and we're in the midst of a, a current program today, which is the largest in the world, 30,000 people to be enrolled. And I say enrolled, not screened, because screening is the first step. You need to manage these patients and educate them, and year after year, monitor their progression of disease. Uh, so we're about, I think we started about six weeks ago. We're more than 50% uh, done. That'll be followed, hopefully, by a program of 75,000 people. Um, I see supporters from the Dominican Republic here. We are working very closely with them, that we think will be even a larger program, maybe 300,000 people to do next year. Uh, we'll be launching a program next month in the Philippines um, and the island of Misamis Occidental, um, and hopefully do additional programs there as well. Turkey, many other parts of the world um, need our, our help and assistance. We're here for the patients, we're here for the doctors, and we're here for the governments because this problem is very expensive. It's often the single uh, highest line item uh, for a healthcare budget. Uh, so the health economic savings are pretty tremendous. David, we ran out of time. But we're not out of time, Asava, so I've got another couple of minutes. Um, and you know, one of the things that I want to uh, really point out is that primary care doctors have to do a lot of this, right? There's not enough nephrologists in New York City, in the United States, in the world. Um, we're short on nephrology right now for a variety of reasons. And as people become more diabetic and overweight and more hypertension, there's not enough nephrology to do all this. So when Salvatore screens all of these people and finds all of this chronic kidney disease, that needs to be taken care of by primary care people who are perfectly willing and able to prescribe inexpensive medications like ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers and the like. Um, treat blood pressure, get people to drink water, um, and you will address some of these problems. Not perfectly, but that's the beginning of it. Yeah, and the last thing I'll, I'll say is that um, when I had this idea with some colleagues about four or five years ago, my colleagues at Harvard Medical School, which I, I had a tremendous experience there to tell me it couldn't be done, it'd be impossible. Uh, we made that impossibility a possibility. We're in many countries in the world. Uh, and I have to thank that the, it's our champions behind us. And the champions can be in healthcare, ministers of health, ministers of finance also, private companies, uh, shipping companies. We found champions that are willing to support us. So. Um, for me, I'm grateful for finding these people that are supporting our mission, um, and we're just getting started. Terrific. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you.